properties of numbers. I'm going to be real honest with you. When I was a kid and I was in school, this lesson would always come up in math and it made me really mad because it just seemed like a bunch of words. I was supposed to know what they were and I didn't see the use of them. My goal is that you see the use of these and that these properties are beneficial and that they make life easier for you. First, look at commutative. I like to think of it as the order doesn't matter. In words, it says you can add or multiply numbers or you know algebra, algebraic expressions in any order. So in algebra, what does that look like? A plus B is the same thing. It's equal to B plus A. I could have more than two terms in it. It's not just like a mirror image of it. I can switch up the order of it. A plus B plus C is equal to C plus A plus B. This also applies in multiplying. X times Y is equal to Y times X. Or X, Y, Z is equal to Z, X, Y. And you should know that when all those letters are just smushed together, there's no symbol in between there, it's meaning multiply. In real numbers, what does that look like? 3 plus 8 is the same thing as 8 plus 3. You'll probably remember when you first learned your addition rules that you learned your 3s. You know, okay, you know, 3 plus 7 is 10, 3 plus 8 is 11, 3 plus 9 is 12. And then when you got to your age, you already knew a lot of them because it was just the opposite of it. Here's where it can come in handy. 2 plus 39 plus 8. If you were to just go left to right with this, 2 plus 39, uh, and you see how you're having to carry numbers? Well, the 2 and the 8, they fit together better. That's 10. Then 10 plus 39 is 49. That makes it a little bit easier. In multiplying, 4 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 4. Both times you would get 12. And again, I can put some numbers together. 4 times 12 is 48. And then when I go to multiply 48 times 25, I don't know about you, but I can't really do that in my head. So I'm able to use the commutative property for that. 4 times 25 is 100. 100 times 12 is 1,200. That's a lot easier. The associative property. I like to think of the short version of that. The grouping doesn't matter. And when you think grouping, you think grouping symbols, which is parentheses. I don't want you to think that just every time you see parentheses that it's automatically associative property. You could apply the commutative property to parentheses. The difference between commutative and associative is with commutative, the order of the terms have changed. Where in associative, they're staying the same. If you'll notice, it still reads A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. The order has not changed. What has changed is the placement of the grouping symbols. So in words, it says when you add or multiply, you can group numbers in any combination. As I said, A plus B, that first, then adding C is the same thing as if I added B and C with those parentheses in A. Thinking back to order of operations, what the associated property allows you to do is kind of skip line in order of operations. With the original example, I'm supposed to add A and B first, but the associated property tells me it's okay that if in my head I want to add B and C first and then add A to it. In multiplication, A times the quantity B times C is the same thing as the quantity AB times C. Put some real numbers in there. In parentheses, 4 plus 5 plus 1 is the same thing as if I have the 5 plus 1 in parentheses and then add the 4. And then in multiplying, 9 times 2 times 6, I can multiply the 2 and the 6 together with that grouping symbol or I can have it grouped over here. The identity property. Got you a little, little pretty eye right there. The idea of this is that you're looking at the answer. It doesn't really require a lot of thought. This is, these, this is one that you know and you've used for a long time. It's why in multiplying, you didn't spend a lot of time learning your ones tables. Or when you were learning addition, you didn't spend a lot of time finding what zero plus something was. Because the sum of zero and a number is that number. Or the product, when you're multiplying, the product of one and any number is that number. In algebra, a plus zero is a. In multiplying, a times one is a. Put some real numbers in there. Negative 15 plus zero, you don't even have to panic because you see a negative there. You just know that it's negative 15. 
Or here we have some fractions. No need to panic because you see a fraction. 3 fourths times 1 is 3 fourths. The next property is probably a little bit newer to you. It's the distributive property. And I like to think of it as equal sharing. If I were to bring a bag of candy to class and I were to just distribute that candy to a few people and not to everybody, y'all are going to be really upset with me. I have to share it equally. Everybody gets the same amount. So in words, what distributive property says is to multiply a number by a sum and think about what's being meant by sum there. It's the answer to an addition. I have to get that adding first, add those numbers and multiply. To do that, I can multiply the number by each term in the parentheses. That's a lot of words. Here's what it looks like in real life. A times the quantity B plus C. This is an associative property. I've got two different operations here. I have multiplying and I have adding. So to do that, I distribute that A to the B and the C, just like I would distribute the candy outside the classroom to each person inside the classroom. So I multiply A times B and then A times C. So that's equal to AB plus AC. I shared the A with the B and the C. This applies to subtraction. And I know you're thinking, wait, you said a sum, not a difference. Well, when we get into integers, you're going to see that there really aren't any more differences. They're all sums. Same thing. I'm going to distribute that A to each term inside the parentheses. A times B minus A times C. With real numbers, A times 14 plus 9. Just normal order of operations, your brain is thinking, hey, I need to add 14 plus 9 first, get 23, and then multiply that times 8. The distributive property says you can kind of go around the order of operations, and it's still a legal move by distributing that 8 to each term inside the parentheses. 8 times 14 is shown here, plus 8 times 9. Works with subtraction. Distribute the 6 to each term inside the parentheses. 6 times 10 minus 6 times 2. Still wondering why do I have to know these? The main idea is it makes mental math easier. We're, we don't teach you these properties to make you miserable. We teach them to make your life easier, to make mental math easier. Take this here, 18 plus 5 plus 2 plus 15. Well, look, you just go left to right, 18 plus 5. Even though you're seventh graders, your brain still stutters a little bit when you get to 18 plus 5 because you're saying, wait, is it 22, is it 23? Oh, I don't know. Switch up the order. 18 plus 2, that's 20. That's a whole lot easier on our brain. And 5 and 15 fit together nicely. So I can add these, get 20. Add this, get 20. 20 plus 20 is 40. That was easier. With associative property, it says originally I need to add 6 plus 7 first. Well, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, hey, 7 and 3 fit together. That gives me 10. So I'm going to group 7 and 3 together, add it, get 10, then add the 6. Now, to use distributive property with mental math, it's kind of like using the distributive property in reverse. Now, remember, this is ideally done in your head. So I'm asking you, what is 6 times 24? And sure, you could write it down real quick, but you're trying to do this in your head. So in your brain, you're, you're trying to stack it, and you're, and you're doing this number, and you're trying to carry in your head. That's confusing. Well, break it apart. 24, we break it up as to 20 plus 4. Makes sense. Then I distribute that 6 to the 20 and to the 4. 6 times 20 there, 6 times 4. 6 times 20 is 120, 6 times 4 is 24, 120 and 24, add it together, I get 144. That was easier. You'll also see distributive property come back when we get into more algebraic expressions. So let's practice this a little bit. Simplify these expressions and justify each of your steps. Pause the video, take a stab at it, and then start the video again when you're ready to compare what you did.
Okay, compare what you came up with. For practice problem A, I reordered it. And you think order doesn't matter because of the commutative property. 9 plus 34, I'm having to carry numbers, which can sometimes be hard on the brain. So I paired the 9 and the 1 because they are more compatible. That's an okay move because of the commutative property. Then I added 9 plus 1, so the explanation is just addition. And then I added 10 plus 34 and got 44. Looking at practice B, 14 times 5. Well, what did I do? I split that 14 up to 10 and 4. Then I distributed the 5 to each term inside the parentheses. 10 times 5 and then 10 plus 4. Then I multiplied those. 10 times 5 is 50. 10 times 4 is 40. And then addition, I added, I got 9.